Hello, everybody, and welcome to the afternoon session in the Baridoch uh, meeting room. Um, for this afternoon session, we have a couple of talks that are more or less closely related to, to data ethics. Um, many people say data is the new oil or data is, pow uh, is uh, power. So, uh, and not at least the pandemic has showed us that our lives literally can depend on data. So, so the topic of data ethics is becoming increasingly important, especially for for open communities uh, like the Phosphor-G community. Um, so I'm looking forward to the interesting talks that we're going to hear. First speaker out is Nisira from uh, Kibera. Uh, she's a community member there, gave a very uh, powerful keynote uh, talk earlier today that I really recommend you to, to have a look at if you haven't seen it. Um, so yeah, Nisera is uh, going to talk about mapping for safety and crime during COVID-19 uh, period in the informal settlements. So um, we go right into your talk, Nisera. <clears throat> the floor is all yours. Thank you so much, Stefan. And uh, yeah, I am from a very big city and uh, the big city with many informal settlement. And uh, yes, I live in Kibra. And uh, welcome to this talk. It's uh, about mapping for safety and crime during COVID. And uh, my name is Nisera Wanjiru. Did you know that when COVID came, it blinded us from saying beyond the holes of our homes. We didn't see through those holes. We didn't see what was happening in our communities. We never saw the dangers of not, of the dangers of other issues that were coming up. Like for example, the issue of crime, the issues of our early pregnancies, the gender-based violence, all that. We never saw that. All we thought was COVID, we slept COVID, we woke up with COVID and uh, even the world was at standstill. But again, as community mappers, we were here to tell the stories in a different way by mapping of what was happening in our community. And uh, that's why I am doing this talk about the mapping for safety and crime, something that we did during the COVID time. And uh, of course, this is me, and uh, I live in this other photo that you see. And uh, this is before COVID, during a demonstration. And uh, yeah, before COVID, how was it? How was life before COVID? And uh, to, tell, to tell you for sure, there was a availability of jobs. We had United Community. We were concerned about every issue around us. And when I talk about the issues, I'm talking about the issues around the gender-based violence, the issues about crime, issues about sanitation, the housing, all the issues that are affecting us, all the issues that are affecting us as community. And uh, what happened when COVID came? To tell you for sure, and uh, this is and uh, this is worldwide, and uh, this is something that is global, not just in communities. And uh, for sure, we've had a lot of job cuts. We have we've had the increase of poverty rates. It's on very high rate. The un yes, today the communities are united. Yes, but we have families who like were torn apart because of the COVID. We have people who separated completely because of COVID. And we have more cases of gender-based violence and the crime rates are on the rise. Cases of early pregnancies, Felix. That one, in fact, like in fact, even where we, I stay, you are, there are a lot of cases of early pregnancies. Not all children are back to school. 
Why? Because families cannot afford to pay their school fees. And again, the women that were pregnant, they're ashamed to go back to the, to the schools because of the stigma. And I remember <clears throat> all these issues eh, that I'm talking about, we had very few, like a 2% of organization who were maybe concerned about them until they, until uh, these issues became now, uh, became very much that every person was speaking about them. The media was speaking about them. And that's when they came out to like, to like uh, speak again, uh, to speak about these issues that I'm talking about. But where were they? And we could have prevented all this. As I say, um, living in uh, slums or communities can be fun. It can only be fun by making sure that we are concerned about the, all the issues in our community. We are concerned about the, we are concerned about the type of the type of data that you collect in the communities, and we are concerned about the peoples themselves the collaboration, engaging the community. And uh, for us as uh, community mappers, um, because there are a lot of cases, now we picked on one and uh, that was the crime, the crime date. And uh, the data was very sensitive, very much sensitive. <coughs> and uh, you can check it on our website. You can check it on our website and um, the target size of this study was 200 women. And uh, we were very specific, whereby we targeted on the on the edge, whereby we were just targeting 30 years and below. And uh, the methodology, we were doing the household questionnaires, the random work. And uh, we used the COBO correct to correct this data. And uh, as I say, uh, this was a very sensitive data, very, very sensitive because um, it is it like opened our eyes on uh, what was what was happening exactly because I, I remember and uh, this was the period and even now that uh, we lost a lot of young people. We lost a lot of young people. There were a lot of cases of femicide and uh, not just in my community and even in other communities. And uh, you are basically looking into uh, going deeper on the causes of these femicide cases, the mob justice, and uh, the driving, the driving force of these criminals. Because, uh, OK, there are people who are killed because they were criminal. And there were those people who were killed because of the mistaken identity. But we wanted to like see what was the driving force of these people. And uh, remember, if I, any man who is killed, he lives behind a woman. And that woman can be the mother, can be the girlfriend. And of course, it can be the mother of his kid. So you can imagine that situation. And uh, all these, you, you were not seeing all this happening because you were thinking about the COVID-19. And uh, yeah, so how was this done? And uh, for us, um, you are we are basically volunteers. So we don't have those uh, machineries like uh, computers, like, all those things, of course, name them. And uh, we do it in a very simple, we did it in a very simple way. And this is how we do our things. And uh, first of all, we mark the hotspot. And uh, as you can see, these are the, I know you can't see the faces, but uh, these are the uh, community mappers who are mapping the hotspot before we, we went to the actual, the actual data correction. And uh, this was, uh, and uh, we even thank 
uh, the, a program like uh, the Super and Inclusive Cities program, which uh, really helped us in uh, doing all these things. Although we are doing it with a pen and a paper. And uh, yes, these are maps. And uh, for those who are listening to me, we can take these maps to the next level. And uh, we can do things. Uh, I know this one is uh, very analog, but uh, you can make us technical as you are. So, yeah, mm -hmm. COVID impacts on women. Yeah, I mentioned this area, and uh, you can see our team asking questions door to door. And uh, and uh, this was uh, this one was the needs assessment survey, which uh, of course we did it uh, during the COVID period. And uh, the other survey is about the COVID impact on women, because uh, we are very strict on the target. We were just targeting women and uh, women below the age of 30 years. That was basically our target because of the uh, because of that we were specific on the type of the port we wanted to light. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. this is our this is our website. As you can see, and uh, this is the report. This is the report, and uh, it's it's open. But now, um, there there is a report that we kept we kept it private, and uh, the other report it's public because of the sensitivity of the of the of the matter, the matter's hand. Because uh, even for example, even when you are when you are, uh, when it comes to data about security, health, this type of data are very sensitive and critical, and uh, we wouldn't want to expose any, any, any young woman who give out her information, and. Um, Yeah, we we did there. Yeah, we did the survey, and uh, for us as community mappers, um, we each and every data we collect, we make sure that we we collect data with the purpose. We don't just collect data, and uh, we collect data um, having some. Uh, having a way forward so what next when we get okay when you get the report how do we make this report how do we like uh change this report to uh to activities how do we like uh, help because uh, we are collecting data in the community how do we make sure that now this data is helping the community and uh, one of the things that we found out is that um the uh, the young people there were a lot of young people who were laid down, and uh, that is uh, dis disputable. And uh, due to this, uh, more people, more young people, were getting into crime. And uh, for the women, for the young women, in fact, they were they they were having a role in all this when it comes to crime. Because uh, imagine, for example, uh, you have you have a boyfriend, and uh, you where you are staying, for example, you have a boyfriend, and uh, where you're staying, your neighbor uh, can provide everything to his girlfriend, and uh, how these young girls were being involved is that uh, they were forcing. Some of them are forcing even the men to enter into crime. And uh, some of them even are, were the biggest perpetrators of crime. And uh, after, the, uh, after this study, we came together and uh, asked ourselves, so what next? Because uh, yeah, this is happening, and but how can we make sure that uh, 
we we come up with solution to save these girls to save their kids to save even their boyfriends or quotes and quotes their husbands and uh, we came up with a food distribution exercise we came up with a food distribution exercise and uh, part of what we did is like uh, training them in businesses because uh, this was getting out of hand as i tell you uh, more and more young people are getting killed and then uh even the the businesses remember we were having curfews and uh, whereby if you are a border border rider you couldn't like work at night if you are employed in a company which is 24 24 hours you couldn't you couldn't continue working because uh, they had to lay off the staff because uh, if they were working 24 hours it means all the people who are working at night they can't work or they have to like uh, lay off some people because it's just 12 hours and even the curfew and uh, we had to feed these people because uh, the complain what we are getting mostly is uh, because I can't feed my kid, I have to do this. Because I can't feed my girlfriend, because I can't feed my family, they, there was a lot of answers which were related to food. And uh, which, of course, is true. It's true because uh, if you are getting a salary and uh, you are relying on that salary, it simply means you can't you can't afford to feed for your family and you can't afford to pay for rent so what we did as part of uh, what we did as community mappers um we came up with the food distribution exercise and uh, this was made possible by by the friends of community mappers whereby we requested we requested them to donate food for us and uh this was each and every month whereby we made sure that uh, we are buying food for at least one week for the people uh, and uh, we were strict enough to make sure that uh, the people who we, we were asking question now we had a follow up because uh, we had all the details from them and of course training them in businesses of which it did help a lot and uh, as you can see this in this is in Kahawa Soweto, and uh, we are having a food distribution exercise. And uh, yeah, the door to door campaigns, and uh, so forth and so forth. Then, and uh, as, as I finish, I want to say this um, all is not lost, and um, if if only we can get into the shoes of community and get to understand them we can make the communities better and uh, if we can if we can all work together and unite as one we can uh, take our communities to the next level because we are talking today we are talking about the global south we are replacing the slums with uh, the slums, the informal settlement with the global south. But remember, the global south is, is not just Africa. We have the Asian. We have the we have the global south. It's like the third one countries, and uh, the only way to make those countries a better place is by by giving out. It's by having a way the best way possible to work with them and uh when you are collect we are collecting data let us collect data that you can use don't collect data that you want to keep in your laptop because um if you come to ask me questions and you are not coming back to me again with this with the report please don't come back to me and that is where the communities are going and uh, if I may ask, why is it that it is very difficult for women to tell their real age? Did you, do you know why? But it is it is not because 
it is not because we don't want to tell our age, it's because the motive behind asking this age. Why are you asking my age and you can't eat my age? Why are you asking my age and you, you are not helping me? And that is where now the communities are going. That is where the communities are going because we've been asked this question for a very long time. And um, when I hear a knock at the door, I'm for sure it's someone coming to ask me a question. Maybe it's a researcher, uh, maybe it's a student, maybe a community member coming to ask me the same question that I was asked yesterday or last month. And uh, that is not helping at all, at all, because uh, we never see this data. We never see this data and our communities are not changing. And my question will be, why is it that our communities are not changing? And we keep on asking information, even lying to the community members. The only way that we can move forward, the only way that we can make it better, better, we can make the slums in Liberia better. The slums in South Africa, I know you have Soweto, which, which people don't call it a slum, is, uh, is by having communities engaged in every step when it comes to data. By making sure the data we are collecting, it is helpful to that community have an agenda for the data that you are collecting. Organization researchers, please, I'm calling out to you. Let's work together to make sure that our communities are much more better than, we, than before. Because for now, we are speaking about the uh, climate change, food security. There's a lot of information that is being taken from the communities, but I'm for sure uh, five years to come, 10 years to come, the communities will be the same. And that is not what I want. I want a community that is much better five years to come in terms of climate change, in terms of food security, and it's only by working together with you who is listening to me. So thank you so much. Any question? Okay, thank you, Nisera, for a very impressive talk. Um, yeah, questions so far. There has been uh, more comments in the in the audience that are supportive of the work that you're doing. Um, no questions so far. So, so what I was wondering a bit is like, how would you uh, want the data that you are collecting? Uh, to be entered into decision-making processes and what kind of decision-making processes do you think uh, your data could uh, make better, could Thank improve? Thank you so much for your question. Thank you so much for your question. Um, when it comes to the data, the data we are collecting and uh, being, for us now being involved in the decision-making, in the decision-making, uh, I think, um, we are getting there because we are getting recognized by even the county government because we are real. We are collecting data based on the issues that you are facing in the informal settlement. Uh, for example, like the uh, trust study, like um, data that involves security, data that involves the sanitation. We are getting real in what we are doing and uh, the um, the county government can see, the administration can see what we're doing. And uh, the only way that we can get we, uh, we can get to the next level is by by maybe the researchers, maybe the students um, coming to help us when it comes to the interpretation of data, because against the fund, um, you find that yes, we are collecting we are collecting this data, and um, for us we are not that super when it comes to the interpretation, putting that data into paper, and making it presentable to the county government. 
maybe to the stakeholder in the community, how to make that data presentable. We are not yet there, and uh, maybe I call upon uh, to anyone who may want to like help us do that. We'll be very happy. Okay, now there is a question uh, about um, are there any communication channels that a researcher can use to share results of studies back to the community? The, yeah, we have a lot of them. For one, we have posters. We can use community radios. The other one, we can use like uh, the focus group discussions to relay message, like uh, take back data to the community. So we have a lot of methods whereby the researchers can use to make sure that uh, the data they collected gets back to the community in the right channels. And uh, the one one that I can I can propose the best is uh, using the stakeholders and uh, the focus group discussions, and then they can go they can go further. Maybe the local radio stations and the posters that works best. Okay, thank you. And there are no more questions, so so I can uh, chip in another one. Um, so when you when you collect the data and sort of give it to uh, public authorities, do you see any difference in in how how the data is uh, sort of conveyed to them um, and sort of what are the levels that are um, sort of most helpful that you perceive as most helpful in terms of really changing things? So it's is it sort of do you need to get the data to the, your local government or do you need to get the data to to state or or even country level or or above so so where where would you see it's most useful to feed the data okay for us we don't take our data to the authorities uh because uh, i'll say it depends which kind of data because uh there are things that there are things that as as community can solve even before getting to the authority. For example, like the issue of the trash, like the issue, unless it's something like this that I'm presenting. Now, when it comes to the security, now we can we can forward this data to the security and say, look, um, we are having this and this and uh, this and this problem, and uh, this is the data we've collected. You can, it's verified and uh, we can go to the next level. And, uh, if we want our data maybe to, um, our data, for by the way, is open source. You can, unless it's very critical. And uh, depends with the kind of data that we are collecting, because we can work just with the stakeholders with that data, and we find a solution even before getting to the next level. But when you don't find a solution with the stakeholders, we go to the higher level, which is now the administration and maybe the county government. So it's a hierarchy because uh, we believe in uh, solving our problems locally. And that's why we are community mappers, just trying to solve our problems by mapping and data collection. And uh, there was a question I was asked during my keynote speak. I want just to answer it before I forget. It's two minutes to time. And uh, they were asking if, uh, if uh, volunteering, if uh, if uh, collecting data, we need uh, we need uh, to be facilitated. Uh, I say that uh, we are volunteers, yes, and uh, at times it becomes even difficult difficult for us to collect this data because we need airtime, and uh, we have now to like go like uh, go back to our board members to tell them please give us airtime just airtime because we need to send these forms so as we can come up with a report so yeah i think when it comes to like the western we, when when it comes to western and uh, the third world countries i think there's a very huge difference by the term by the term um, volunteering for us, when it comes to volunteering, I think it's 
It's volunteering with no single cent, but when it comes to the Western countries, at least they get stipend for the volunteering. 